Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice, I want to say exponential, but this is kind of non-standard because we have the exponential function on one side and the polynomial on the other side. So it's kind of half exponential maybe. So we have 8 to the power x minus 1 equals x to the power 7 and we're going to be solving for x values. So we're going to be looking at some interesting stuff here. We'll be looking at graphs, some results from Wolfram Alpha, so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and manipulate this equation a little bit so we can use a very special function to solve this problem. I'm going to write the 8 to the power x minus 1 as 8 to the power x divided by 8, which is 8 to the first power, equals x to the seventh. And then let's go ahead and cross multiply. That gives us 8 to the power x equals 8x to the seventh. Great, so we have this exponential function on one side and the polynomial, the seventh degree heptic, septic polynomial on the other side. So in order for our special, very special functions to work, we do need something that looks like t e to the t. And probably I'm going to have something like x instead of the t or something similar to x. Okay, some multiple of x. So we do have x to the seventh power. That's not good we do need x to the first power. So let's start by taking the seventh root of both sides. And seven is kind of fine because when you take the square root, sometimes you have to be careful about hitting negative values because that's not defined. The square root of a negative number is not a real number. I hope I said it right. Anyways, so from here we get the following, a to the power x over seven because I can divide the exponent here. And let's go ahead and separate these. The seventh root of eight multiplied by x. There we go. We got the x, so that's probably going to be our t here with some modification. But we have eight to the power x over seven. I do need e to the power something. So I'm going to use the famous identity e to the power ln t equals t. So I can basically write eight to the power x over seven as e to the power ln a to the power x over 7. But of course, this x over 7 can be moved to the front, and now this becomes e to the power x over 7 times ln 8. That's going to replace the left-hand side, and the right-hand side is just going to stay f uh, the same for now. So let's go ahead and write it as e to the power x over 7 times ln 8 equals, right, the seventh root of 8 times x. Okay, now if you bring the x to the left, you're going to have to deal with either x to the power of negative 1 or 1 over x. They're not good for our purposes. We want x to the power 1. So let's go ahead and bring the exponential instead. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by the seventh root of 8 first, so, and then divide by this. So this is what it's going to look like when we do it. x divided by e to the power x over 7 ln 8 equals 1 over 7th root of 8. I hope this makes sense because when you cross multiply, you get the same thing. Make sense? Now, this expression at the bottom, this one, can be written with a negative exponent. So we can bring it up top, x e to the power negative x over 7 ln 8 equals 1 over 7th root of 8. Now notice that this is actually getting closer to the form that I wanted in t e to the t. Okay? We're almost there. What we need now is, since this is going to be our t, I need to multiply both sides by negative ln 8 over 7, or negative 1 over 7 times ln 8. Make sense? So when we do, we're going to get negative x over 7 ln 8 times e to the power negative x over 7 ln 8 equals, of course, when I do multiply both sides by negative ln 8 over 7, I have to do the same thing on the right-hand side, negative ln 8 over 7, multiply by uh, 1 over 7th root of 8. And I could probably write it as 8 to the power negative 1 over 7. Okay, does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, we're going to start manipulating the right-hand sides because the left-hand side is ready to go. On the right-hand side, we can do the following. We can write this as negative 1 over 7 ln 8 times 8 to the power negative 1 over 7. And then we can kind of bring this up top and write it as ln 8 to the power 
negative 1 over 7 times a to the power negative 1 over 7. Now since we do need e, let's go ahead and replace uh, 8 with e to the power something. Uh, well, we can basically replace 8 with e to the power ln 8. And then, of course, that's going to be multiplied by negative 1 over 7. So I think at this point, it makes more sense to keep the negative 1 over 7 here instead of uh, putting it over there. So I'm going to write it again as negative 1 over 7 ln 8 times e to the power of that. And I'm going to bring this back uh, again. So I kind of uh, uh, rewind this and forget about this. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that. So now, what do we have on the right-hand side? Negative x over 7 ln 8 times e to the power negative x over 7 ln 8. Notice that we have the same thing here and here. So if you go ahead and call this, I don't know, something like, how about t? This is going to become t. And since this is a constant, let's call this c. And this is going to be c as well. So we have something like t e to the t equals c e to the c. Here comes the super duper special function, which is called Lambert's W function. Okay, so that's gonna, we're gonna W both sides, and that's gonna give us what we want. Let's go ahead and briefly talk about it. I think in a previous video, which was like an hour ago maybe, uh, the same video, another video from today, we talked about this, didn't we? I think so. And we said that, okay, if you Lambert W T to the T, you get t as a result. So it's kind of like the inverse function for this. So from here, we're going to get t equals c. Very simple, right? So if your input is t to the t, you're going to get t. If it's c to the c, you're going to get c. Do you see what I see? Hopefully. Now, here's how we proceed. Back substitute. What is t? Negative x over 7 ln 8. And c is a constant. Remember, negative 1 over 7 ln 8. Awesome. ln 8 cancels out. 7 cancels out, negative 1 cancels out, and we end up with x equals 1. And you're like, oh, come on. Didn't we already know that? That was obvious. Okay, great. If you go back to the original problem, 8x to the power 1 minus 1 equals x to the 7. Well, if x equals 1 is obvious, and it is obvious for obvious reasons, because 8 to the power 0 is 1, and 1 to the 7th power is 1. So that kind of makes it a little easier. We should definitely check for zero power. But is that the end of this story? So let's go ahead and look at it from another perspective because there's another solution. We're going to be looking at a couple of different things. But before we get there, I want to tell you something. You could arrive at this, uh, the other solution by using Lambert's W, but I think it's going to be a little painful. If you know of an easy way to manipulate it, please let me know in the comment section. But this is what I thought of. Since 8 to the power x is a power of 8, and 8 is a power of 8, I think x should also be a power of 8 somehow, right? It could be rational, whatever. So I'm going to replace x with 8 to the power n. Hopefully n is an integer. And now we're going to get the following. This is going to be 8 to the power 7n. Since this is first power, from here I'm going to get x equals 7n plus 1. So if n is an integer, it could be 1, and then x could be 8. And guess what? That is going to work for the very reason, because our base is 8. So 8 to the 8 equals 8 to the 8. In other words, x equals 8 is another solution. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, couple things so that we can see what is going on. So I told you that, yes, x equals 1 is a solution, but, okay, looking at it from a Wolfram Alpha, I mean, not Wolfram Alpha, what is that called? That? Lambert's W function perspective. Of course, there are two different branches, which should normally give you two results. Okay, so this is kind of reduced logarithmic form, and you can kind of see that 1 is a solution, but it doesn't show the other one, which is 8, right? And these are integer solutions. These are, again, from Wolfram Alpha. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. Uh-oh. This graph only shows a single solution, which is x equals 1. But why is that? Because you really have to zoom out. And trust me, it looks really weird. That's why I want to show you a different graph, which is the difference of these two functions. Obviously, when the difference is 0, then we get a solution. And as you can see, there are two solutions at x equals 1 and x equals 8. 
And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.